Hello there, welcome back to Simon Shed and welcome to a 3D printing uh, update video. Uh, a lot of people have been asking uh, for an update on how I'm getting on. I bought my Elegoo Mars, uh, Mars 3 Pro, get it right, uh, resin printer back in June. And uh, yeah, I've been getting on well with it. So yeah, let's uh, give you an update on what's been going on with that. We'll get some trains running while we're doing this. Um, I've been doing a lot of running of trains. Unfortunately not filmed any of the running. I really should do some, some running videos now. I've got the layout into a state where there's scenery everywhere. But uh, yeah, I will do that at some point. But this video is about what's going on down here with the Mars 3 Pro. We've now got an Anycubic wash station and we've also got an FDM uh, printer the Creality Sir Moon V1 Pro so as you can probably tell from the uh, way it looks it's certainly been well used and uh, all started out fantastic I uh, left everything on the default settings and everything was fine uh, unfortunately then I changed multiple things at once and everything went downhill rapidly uh, so let me show you so if you print things flat on the build plate with uh, resin printers it is quite difficult to uh, to sort of you literally have to chisel things off uh, the solution to that is something like this which is a flexible build plate uh, so I bought these and you can see they do flex and you have this uh, sticky pad on this side and a magnet on the other side so that goes uh, sticks on there and then this uh, just sticks to that and when you finish printing you just pull it off with the tab there at the same time I started using water washable resin and uh, yeah, I tried to, because obviously now this is further down, tried to re-level everything. And this started to try to drill its way through here uh, and through the screen. Fortunately managed to stop it before it did any damage and then did a bit of reading and found that uh, the resetting of the home position does not work as I expected. And you have to physically modify uh, something up here which is a little um, essentially a piece of plastic that goes down and hits a, a stop switch uh, to stop the uh, the build plate going down too far so did that <coughs> set it up and essentially couldn't get anything to print properly had loads of print failures and uh, yeah it was a bit of a, a bit of a disaster really so I reset everything back to stock and uh, took the spacers out of the top there and went back to just printing directly on this and uh, switched away from the the water washable resin which I think was part of the problem and fortunately uh, everything started to go well again I do think the water washable resin was part of the problem uh, don't I didn't get on with it at all um, it was very brittle the prints and it was just hopeless there were a lot of uh, print failures and yeah I'm currently trying uh, some of these new Conjor resins that I've been sent and they look promising so I'll do a little review video on that at some point and if I'm feeling very patient I may may give these another try but uh, yeah not really too keen I think the problem is if you get anything between the magnet and the uh, plate the level is uh, is off uh, so things are not gonna stick to the bed properly if it's not perfectly level you really have to get the the bed level and uh, I'll put a link in the description that there's a new way that I'm using to level the bed which involves uh, leaving this in and doing a sort of dummy print and just switching the printer off as it prints the first layer and then tightening these screws up uh, it seems to work a lot better so I'll put a link to that in the description 
And once I got everything working again, I started printing out uh, things and started designing things in Tinkercad, which is a CAD program where you can produce 3D models. Um, so a lot of uh, security fence. This is one of my designs. So a lot of that fence, uh, some of that's bought off eBay, but some of it is mine. Uh, seriously thinking about selling that on eBay because it's uh, it's come out really well. And I also designed a shipping container in Tinkercad. And <clears throat> you can tell this is the water washable resin because it's sort of shrunk and warped and cracked horribly. Really didn't get on with it at all. That needs to go in the bin to be honest. But yeah. I think with a bit of refinement, this uh, and some decent resin, this could possibly, let's have a look at this one, this could possibly go on sale too, there's quite a lot of detail on the ends, I just need to find a way of printing it out that doesn't involve having three holes in the bottom. <laughs> also found on Thingiverse some model files for cars and just did some test prints of that and they come out surprisingly well so obviously need painting it's a question of what you do with the windscreens really uh, whether you can sort of paint those black and they will look okay or what but the actual the actual models printing it printed out amazingly well uh, the only problem is the, the models I found were extremely detailed and when you scale them down the, the sort of CAD software just can't cope with all the tiny little parts so it was a real struggle to, uh, to get these to, to sort of slice but yeah that's another thing to look into it's a promising start just need to do a bit more messing about with the models and uh, yeah, can't sell those because uh, it's somebody else's design and I guess obviously the, the rights to the actual image of the car are not mine but uh, yeah, certainly worth pursuing because I have a lot of parking spaces to fill. Then, after uh, making just that one video on the uh, Elegoo Mars 3 Pro had an email from another com printer company, Creality, who wanted to send me this. So yeah, I've been playing with this FDM printer. And whilst I've not been able to get it to, to do any sort of detail prints that I'm happy with for N-Gage, uh, certainly compared with the resin printer, uh, all of these uh, brackets to hold up the cars have been uh, printed on the FDM printer rather than the resin printer. So yeah, that big ugly wardrobe that was screwed to the wall has now gone. And I've got a much more, a much neater solution. Also been chopping up uh, various pictures just to add a bit more color to this, uh, this wall and keep building that up as well. So then I went back to resin printing and uh, if you've done any resin printing, you'll know it's the cleanup after the print that is uh, a bit of a faff and a bit of a pain. So I decided to buy this. It's a wash and cure station. So you can see it's in wash mode at the moment. Got a big tank of uh, IPA in there, which you uh, clean the prints with. So just take the lid off. And yeah, you just stick the prints in the basket and you probably can't see it. Yes, you can. There's a little sort of fan arrangement in there, which spins round, I assume, with a magnet because there's no physical connection between that and the, uh, the sort of fan inside the tank. But... Uh, it's a very strange noise, but uh, you can see inside there, it's sort of spinning the IPA around. 
and then once you've washed and dried everything you just take that off put that on switch it to cure mode and it uh, cures the model with the UV light not absolutely essential but yeah very very handy and much more convenient than trying to sort of cure it yourself with a little lamp or in the sun or uh, yeah it's just just so much more so much easier and more convenient definitely recommend getting one of these also printed out some daft but uh, surprisingly useful bits uh, I was forever looking for a place <laughs> to uh, store the remote for the uh, LEDs and losing it. So yeah, I literally just went into Tinkercad, drew a box and put a hole in the box and a little uh, bit on the side for a screw and printed it out. And because it's a custom design, it exactly fits that uh, remote control and essential gonna have a cup holder so uh, yeah again just designed that in Tinkercad and printed that out and that's been very useful as well so that's a little update where I'm at at the moment is um, the resin printer is definitely the one for sort of especially n-gauge uh, scenery bits and detail parts so yeah Essentially, it's over to you. What, what do you want to see? Um, I'm thinking of a sort of introduction series where I go through, you know, where to where to find the files and how, how to slice them and any tips on how to sort of angle things on the build plate to get things to print better. Um, a sort of beginner's introduction series to, uh, to 3D printing. As I say, I'll probably focus on the on the resin printer because that's really where you get the detail. I may include uh, FDM printers in that, but uh, as I say, let me know if there's anything in particular particular you want to see. So yeah, uh, do look out for the uh, sort of beginner series on sort of 3D printing for model railways. Um, as I say, there's a review of that resin coming up, which uh, spoiler alert, I was very impressed with and uh, there's a couple more videos I've recorded on the sort of finishing off the review of the Creality uh, printer as well. So uh, kind of as I hinted at and suspected, uh, it has been a, a huge sort of uh, interest slash distraction um, getting into 3D printing because it is a, a huge sort of subject area and that's why I deliberately didn't buy one. Uh, while I was trying to finish off the uh, sort of scenery coverage for the layout. But uh, yeah, now I've ended up with two and uh, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do some more videos uh, shortly. And also uh, if I can get that uh, fence printing out reliably and, and sort of strong enough, I'll do some test sales on eBay and see how that goes maybe. And uh, I'll let you know if I do manage to get that on sale. Um, and yeah, let's see if I can give you a discount code or something. Um, but uh, for now, yeah, thanks very much for watching. So uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.